Hi guys, welcome to the Watch Hobbyist channel with me, Wayne, and today I wanted to look at Seiko's recent change in direction with their sort of core diver line. Um, I've got a few watches here from my own collection, and I just wanted to look at, uh, with the recent sort of new uh, implementation of the Seiko 5 Sports range and the recent discontinuation of the SKX range, sort of where the sort of mid-price level divers watches exist now and, and you know, what what scenario we have with the Seiko range in general basically so I've noticed that Seiko as a whole has recently been sort of increasing prices and that's not the end of the world they are a business they're more than you know allowed to do that and also what that means is that hopefully their products will get better and better um, but it's also quite a sad time because like I say the SKX which you see here has now been discontinued and this is literally one of the greatest watches of all time. Um, maybe not on paper, so there are a few specs, like it doesn't hack with the movement. It has um, the older 7S26 movement, so um, it's not quite as good as the, the modern movements. But it still had a power reserve of 41 hours, which is only what the current ones have now. And luminescence was incredible dive capability was incredible it's a, this is an actual divers watch this is iso certified which means as far as i'm aware at the factory basically the um i'm not sure if they test every single watch for its certification or every single case without the movement in it but they certainly take like a sort of mean sample and what they will do therefore if it is that way is that they will produce say a thousand of these and they will take one or two or five or ten or whatever test those make sure they all pass and if they do then the whole batch goes through um, you know this is a proper divers watch for people that actually do scuba dive and, and dive um, and therefore you know it was a cheap watch and a cheap option for that and now what you find is that this SKX range has now gone which means that we now have, in place of that really, the more expensive Seiko 5 Sports range, which was always a very cheap range, and the SK, uh, sorry, the Seiko 5 uh, that we now have here is 100 meters water resistant, looks like a diver's watch, but actually isn't a diver's watch. Now, I know that a lot of people aren't even bothered about diving and things like that, but really this is kind of the history that Seiko has built their image on. Um, so all right, we now have Grand Seiko with all the Zeratsu polishing and they're thousands and thousands of pounds and there's some JDM only models and things like that. Um, but, you know, these watches are the core seller. You know, they they might sell probably one Grand Seiko for every quite a few of these. And this is therefore their main business. But yet recently the model has changed and they've been trying to do this for quite a while. I've noticed that a lot of their prices have been increasing. Um, and in some ways, like I say, I think it's good. It's a business. They need to improve their products. To do that, they need to do R&D. To do that, they need funds. Therefore, by increasing the prices and hopefully selling as many watches as they always have done, then great. You know, they're a wealthier company and they can produce better watches. But actually, these watches, you know, although we go on about the quality of this watch and that watch with Rolex and Patek Philippe and things like that, how many times have you been on holiday and you've seen some guy that works at the local port and he's got something like this X SKX on, it's 20, 25 years old, it's still ticking, it's still running, um, has loads of scratches on it, but the thing still works just because it's a bit rattly, you know, to the touch and stuff like that. Doesn't mean that it isn't a quality item, it just doesn't necessarily seem that on the, you know, on the face of it when you first hold that. But I remember holding my first Rolex, which was actually a watch that I now own, uh, a different one but it was a uh, the 16610 LV and that's the older Submariner the five digit sub and the first time I ever held one of those it felt just as rattly as one of these yet now if you look at the prices of those on the second hand market they're absolutely ridiculous so people will pay for that brand but the quality compared to a current Submariner it just isn't there and, and anybody will tell you that that's not to say it's a bad watch it has a charm of its own but at the same time you know that perceived quality is different as soon as you hold it now what we have it really under a thousand pound with Seiko there are a few other models um, but I think that the three sort of core models that would have been say last year or this year um, would be these three here now obviously we no longer have the SKX that was discontinued this year 
we have the Seiko 5 and we also have watches like the Turtle which you see here or the Samurai um, you know and watches along those lines where uh, they're a bit more expensive they don't sort of have the same low quality feel they feel heavier um, they just feel like a more well put together watch and these do have the 200 meter official dive rating but for me this is the Pretender and as much as I wanted to like this watch I mean I actually searched long and hard to find this particular one because it's the it's the all black model it has like a bloody black PVD case it has some kind of sandblasted uh, rear case here as well if you can see and also you can actually see through the crystal at the back to the movement I'd, I'd have to take the strap off but um, I don't know if you can see that just briefly you can get an idea that you can see through to the movement the movement is far from spectacular um, but it is the same movement that is in this watch so officially the only real difference between these two apart from the looks is just the uh, 200 meters water resistant rating and the price so to me what this has done by increasing the price on this because these are around about 250 to 300 okay these ones average around about i'd say about late 300s to 400 there are some special edition models with the turtle that are around about 500 pounds now um, but if you look at the sort of more core standard range, which this actually is, this isn't a limited edition or anything, this Seiko 5. Um, for me personally, I think this now looks like more of a bargain than it ever has done the Turtle. But at the same time, it means that now, really, the buy-in point for Seiko for me personally is the Turtle. And that's why I won't sell my SKX probably ever, because Seiko, unfortunately, will probably never produce a watch like the SKX again. And the SKX was more than good enough for me. I've always been super happy with watches like this where they just do their job. Um, you know, all right, the timekeeping may not be that accurate, but I don't really get too bothered about that. I'm not a scientist or a doctor or whatever that I need to be absolutely bang on accurate to the millisecond. You know, I can live with a watch that's maybe 10 seconds out a day. And then over a week, I just need to reset it at the end of the, the week or whatever. I'm fine with that. And also, the newer movements now, this 4R36 that's in these two here, uh, so the two on the left-hand side, the Turtle and the Seiko 5, the 4R36, although it's a great movement, it only has the same power reserve as the SKX did. It has features like hand-winding ability, uh, which the SKX didn't, so to basically if, you, if this watch had run out, you just basically shake it a little bit and it kicks off again and away we go. Um, it has also the hacking scenarios so when you pull the crown out at to the full amount you know it will basically stop the movement therefore you can set it very accurately this doesn't do that but again I'm not particularly bothered um, so there are extra benefits but at the same time that's still not a particularly accurate movement you know I mean it's very rare to find a 4R36 that actually is accurate to within sort of 5-10 seconds a day um, you know they're quite often worse than that so it's one of those things that I think really Seiko are, are on the face of it improving their watches but really actually what they're doing is they're improving the price point, they're improving their profit um, but we're not really as the end consumer getting a better watch overall, we're just get, getting a different watch and to me, I'm not 100% sure, I've not measured it but I think that the, uh, the SKX here of old and the newer Seiko 5 Sports have the same case so actually from an R&D perspective all they've really done is they've put the newer type of movement into the Seiko 5 range which used to be their really cheap uh, you know easily easily accessible by anyone range um, and then they've decreased the water resistance rating by putting some kind of different case back on it I mean, the other thing as well is quite often water resistance ratings are underrated. It's a bit like horsepower on cars, like a McLaren 720S supposedly has 720 uh, PS, but actually has around about 800, it's been confirmed. So, you know, there's quite a lot of times where companies will uh, sort of tell you something it's not. But at the same time, this is not a true diver's watch. It doesn't even have a pip, a bezel pip at the top on the bezel. Um, this particular one, the luminescence being black, 
it does have loom but it's honestly not the best at all um, and also this doesn't actually have a screw down crown so it actually has a crown that you can screw in situ and wind the movement up but it's not uh, you know it's not a screw down and that's another reason for the lack of water resistance on this model so this is a watch that you could go swimming with but it's not true to Seiko's heritage, it just looks like it. And also I'm still a bit unsure about that automatic text uh, on the dial, which is just a funny script. I'm still a little bit reserved about that. So for me, it's just, I wanted to look at Seiko as they are now. Um, if anybody's wondering about this turtle, by the way, uh, so you can see the little polar bear there. Uh, I recently took a trip to Svalbard in the Arctic Circle and uh, the most northern supermarket in the world i think it is they had uh, 10 seiko turtles made and this was actually the last one in the store and um, they have a polar bear symbol because polar bears actually walk around in svalbard and it's a really interesting place i'd recommend it to anybody um, it's a place where you walk around with a rifle and then when you walk into this particular supermarket they have a little uh, cabinet at the front of the store and you put your rifle in there, do your shopping, and then pick it up on the way back. It's that kind of place. Uh, 2,700 people live there permanently, and it's a really, really interesting place. But because of the polar bear sort of risk, um, I think that's why they chose to put this on here. And it's actually a sign. Uh, you can see the signs around that say, warning polar bears, and that's basically what that is. So I bought that as a little memento of my trip, but they only ever made 10 of them. Um, and I love this watch. Just going back to these what are your thoughts i mean for me personally like i say i think that we're being charged more but we're not necessarily getting any more for what we pay for now and i think that all that's happening is is the price points are coming up because a lot of these watch manufacturers are jumping on the bandwagon and it's going to eventually you know get to the point where if there is a bubble that we're in and it does end which is a possibility i mean i don't necessarily go in for all this bubble stuff but i know that one of the the things that I do look at is, um, you know, Watchfinder and, and companies like that when they're doing sales. Quite often, it's usually the rubbish that they're selling. You know, the stuff that nobody would buy the the bimetal date just with diamonds on them that somebody's done on a street corner and you know things like that. And that makes sense to see that in a sale. But quite recently, we've seen sort of the BL BLNRs and the Hulks and things like that in sales. Um, they're already crazy overpriced anyway, but it perhaps shows that people aren't spending as much as they were maybe a year ago. And we're starting to see watches that, you know, are a part of this bubble. And this shouldn't affect this area of the market too much. I mean, at the end of the day, these watches, you know, most people with a decent monthly sal salary could uh, quite easily afford one of these. Um, you know, these aren't Rolexes and stuff like that. But it does show that, you know, the, the, the thing that used to be a cheap watch that maybe you'd buy on holiday or stuff like that just doesn't seem to really exist anymore. And, you know, it's just a sign of the times that people or it's certainly perceived that people have lots of money and therefore, you know, every single part of the market gets affected. And I just think, you know, I hope that Seiko don't go too much further with this. I hope that they don't think that they can suddenly start charging a thousand pound for Seiko turtles down the line because... Really, you know, if you look at uh, brands such as Tag Heuer, it does look a bit like Seiko are starting to come after them a bit. Um, there's been some sales here recently around Christmas and, you know, this, uh, like I say, there's versions of this watch, this turtle, that there's maybe, they're 500 pounds. And yet I've seen Tag Heuer watches with less water resistance rating for maybe 800 pounds. So the, the disparity is, is getting, it's all getting closer basically. Uh, once the prices of these watches start to come up and then there's obviously the argument of the Apple watch and things like that and it is surprising that it hasn't affected this side of the market too much but also I do see mostly younger people wearing Apple watches whereas I don't see um, people particularly young wearing these Seikos and things like that so I just hope that Seiko sort of know what they're doing I'm sure they do they've been going for a very long, long time um, but watches like this are not really what I like to see. Watches like this are what I like to see, where you get lots and lots of value for money, and it ends up where we as collectors don't end up just having one of these, we'll end up buying several of these, 
and we'll have different colors and different bezels and different strap combinations and things like that and that's what's nice to see that's that's the nice part of collecting when things don't cost too much and you can really enjoy them um, these watches here they did release an awful lot of different color schemes and things like that with this model but none of them really excited me apart from this and actually then when I got it in the hand I realized it's really just a watch pretending to be something else so I would be really interested to hear your opinions on things uh, you know comment below give the video a thumbs up if you like it and please make sure you subscribe to the channel uh, I will be trying to bring you more videos soon uh, on all sorts of different watches thanks for watching and I hope you have a great new year because this is now just the end of 2019 and I will see you again very soon